One ecosystem, you know them? We no right no for nobody, but we respect everybody, and we better than everybody. So we will run with anybody. No fear, no better than we. No kind, no better than we. Step on me one and say, one ecosystem to the world. You say, one ecosystem will do something, do something, do something, do something, do something. Do something. Do something, I'm not talking. One ecosystem will do something, do something, do something, do something, uno do something, do something, I'm not bag a lip chasing. Hey, hey. One ecosystem, you know that. And a good evening to Trinidad and Tobago, good evening, Caribbean, and good evening, Will. Welcome to this wonderful show, Beyond 2021. It's the 2nd of March, 2022, and we are advancing with the latest technologies. This is the show where we discuss uh, technologies that are advancing, you know, like cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology. Last week, we discussed the metaverse so all the emerging technologies, when it comes to the cyber world and the digital space, this is the show to be viewing, ladies and gentlemen. So we welcome you to Beyond 2021, that show where we delve into all these emerging technologies and we invite you to take a seat, pull up a chair, call a friend, tell a neighbor that we are on Beyond 2021. And this is season four. It is the 11th edition and we have a lot of exciting stuff to talk about, my dear people. We want to engage you. You can call in. You can send a message. You can contact us to get further information. So we welcome all our co-hosts, uh, Mrs. Samuel Singh, Donna Samuel Singh, and her husband, uh, Mr. Cliff Samuel Singh. We also want to welcome Mr. Dwayne Cadiz. It's exciting to be here to be discussing this evening a very important topic. Uh, central bank or central banking and so, cryptocurrency. What is the difference between cryptocurrency and uh, central bank digital currencies? We're going to be exploring, we're going to be discussing, engaging in this whole topic this evening. So welcome, guys. And I think we have, after your introduction, we have also a disclaimer to make before we proceed with the program. So welcome, everyone. Welcome. Yes, welcome. Do you know? Do you want to say anything? Yes, blessings on this Ash Wednesday to our population here in Trinidad. Wait, you're not on Maracas Beach? <laughs> <laughs> they should be at Maracas. It's cool, dog. It's Monday and Tuesday pass, you know? Correct. You know, so they've had a taste of carnival. And of course, you know, carnival took uh, with it a lot of disposable income because, you know, going to those fets uh definitely had a course attached to it and now some people have to uh, repay the loans that they borrowed to have a time you hmm. know, rather than taking that little bit of liquidity and investing in something that will give them an appreciated value moving into the future but you know everybody has a choice i know some uh, some is about wine woman and song you know and some will put something in place for the future or put something away for a rainy day, so to speak. Yes. So, so yeah. just... I wanna I wanna say um I'm looking forward to this topic that we're gonna discuss this evening. However, before we get in that, I just want to express express a more somber note. You know, um because of the business that we enter and because of the length of time that we have been involved in this business, um all of us here is almost going into six years that we have been involved in this business. We have grown, we have gotten to know post, um, other IMAs across the globe who share the same cause with us. And I just want to send a, 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 um, a feel good, stay strong, um, prayers, prayers, you know, upbeat Love. attitude. So the people in Ukraine, our IMAs in Ukraine and our IMAs in Russia, we're not taking any sides here. We just send in strength, yeah. peace, love That's and right. comfort That's right. to the our IMAs 
some of them we have grown to know, right? I know Donna did a program uh, a couple years ago where she was interacting with the country managers of various countries. So she would have dealt with a couple of the country managers from those countries, right? Muriel, who is the, the director of this program, would have would know these persons very intimately. You understand? So we do know some of these people and we want to say, listen, guys, please be strong. Please. Um, we don't understand the politics that's going on there. We could just go on the news that we hear. And all we know is that we have for love for you guys from both countries. So um, again, please, please um, try your best to stay safe on both sides. Yes, the things that is happening out there, well, we continue to pray and yeah. we continue to touch each other with love, send love out there. But this evening, as we begin, we're going to go into our topic. As Brother Noel shared with you a short while ago, Central Bank, and we are going to look at cryptocurrencies with Central Bank, and we are going to look at the Central Bank digital currencies and how it works. But before we do that, I want to share a disclaimer with you. We are not financial advisors. We are not here to give financial advice. We are not advisors. What we are simply here to do, the topics discussed are purely for educational consideration and are not meant to be misconstrued as financial nor investment advice. We are just sharing with you what we think, what we feel, and we hope that you would view and will open your minds and direct you to more information, more things that is happening in the world today. Okay, so let's begin. Let's open this evening's topic with some excitement. So our, uh, we will, I love it. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Central bank on cryptocurrencies. No restrictions on purchases. Central bank on cryptocurrencies. No restrictions on purchases. That's our central bank. That's our central bank we are talking about, eh, ladies and gents. This is from the Daily Express. So let's read. Let me share a bit with you about it. So let's continue and let's bring up some of the, the, the beginning. Let's bring up the beginning. It's highlighted. Wait. It's highlighted and they're going to give it to us. Starting at the very beginning. No, that's too, too low. Go up. to the top. Go to the top, please. Right? And the first four paragraphs. Okay, yeah. maybe it's not coming up, but I will read it for you. Don't worry about it. Trinidad and Tobago's central bank said last week that it is not blocking commercial banks from selling foreign exchange to their customers to purchase cryptocurrencies. But the regulator of the local financial sector reiterated a warning it first made in January 2019. In a joint release with the TNT Securities and Exchange Commission and the Financial Intelligence Unit about the potential risk of investing in or conducting transactions with cryptocurrencies. Several people have complained to the Sunday Express about the difficulty of accessing foreign exchange from local commercial banks to purchase Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency. Asked last week if the central bank has directed or suggested that commercial banks not release foreign exchange to customers to purchase cryptocurrencies, a spokesperson for the bank said, while there are currently no legal restrictions on such investments, or a specific directive to commercial banks, the Central Bank Securities and Exchange Commission and Financial Intelligence Unit, Intelligence Unit in Trinidad and Tobago strongly advise on the large risk inherent in investment in cryptocurrencies. I'll stop there. Let's talk for a bit because yeah. I have a point to make already. But I will let all you go with the flow. 
Donna, before you continue, just cite the article and the date on which it was published so our viewers won't uh, or so our viewers will understand. Thank you very much for that, for that, Dwayne. Thank you very much. I'm getting back to it. It's February 27, 2022, written by Asha Javid. Hope I pronounced that clear. And the, the topic was dealing Daily Express Central Bank on cryptocurrencies, no restrictions on purchases. February 27, 2022. Thanks for that, Dwayne. Beautiful. So it's not fake news. No, it's not. It's in the Daily Express. Well, 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 just now, the newspaper is not a fake newspaper. The details, as they say it, is something that we're going to discuss. <laughs> you understand? I like so, that. All right. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yes. Right. But I'm looking at. So, all you want me to start by putting or you? I, 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 I'm willing to wait to hear you guys first. You know, well, I have a point I want to make. I want to ask a question. Do you say I want to wait until others? Yeah, but I find they're taking too long. Well, let yeah. me start. Let me start. start. I'll start I'll right away. Answer it. I will start Doesn't right away. You know? Doesn't this sense? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Brother Noel. Yes, citing the, the article, right? I quote the high probability of loss should be carefully considered by investors and financial institutions that are approached to facilitate such activity. I mean, this is, this is a kind of warning mm -hmm. from the, 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 the authorities. I would like to say that we of the One Ecosystem, we have done quite a lot, even on this program. And when we, we met physically at our various locations, educating people about authentic cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and the new method of payment and the new money, cryptocurrency, authentic cryptocurrency, which, which functions as, as gold because there is a limited supply that the blockchain uh, will, will mine or the blockchain will create. And so we have what is called more transparency more accountability, it fights corruption, it allows for speed and ease of doing business, it facilitates real growth and development, faster transactions global all over the world. And our uh, cryptocurrency, the one in the ecosystem, one ecosystem, we are, of course, an, a viable, authentic blockchain that has great speed and efficiency. We are also uh, KYC, know your customer encrypted on the blockchain. We have uh, a the framework where you cannot use our cryptocurrency to do money laundering or to finance terrorism. So we, we, we were and are ideally poised in this world of cryptocurrency amidst the uh, how much? 12,000 plus mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies and tokens and so on. We are, you know, positioned well. But we heard nothing from Central Bank. We heard nothing from the Security Exchange Commission. And even, even the who's who in today's society in Trinidad and Tobago. So we see this article now. We're hearing about things going on in the Caribbean, Jamaica, Antigua, and all these other Caribbean about a central bank digital currency. My personal view is that no real, concrete, tangible, comprehensive education is being given to the masses, not by the universities, not by the so-called academic scholars in our society, the economists and so on. We hear little from them about cryptocurrency. It's only recent we start to hear talk about cryptocurrency. My take on this thing, people, is that there is an attempt to <laughs> hijack, as it will, the minds of people. And, you know, issue propaganda up upon their mind, give them a warning, you know, about this cryptocurrency thing, when really and truly it is a good thing. It is new money. And... It's just a takeover by the banks because they want to profit because they see this thing apparently as a disruptive technology. And it is only the who's who and the, those who are in the know who are into finance in the background, like the managers of corporations and 
banks and so on, they are buying up and buying up a whole set of Bitcoins and other cryptocurrency, yes, and the sir. masses there don't, don't know nothing about it. And all the time you've been blocked from using your credit card or having access to get US dollar to buy crypto. Crypto is, um, well, generally speaking, a form of investment, right? Our, own is, our, our product is not that, but generally speaking, it's investment. So they, they're warning you about it now. What about all other types of investment? Why didn't they give the information before, share the information to the public about what is cryptocurrency, what is digital currencies, the difference, and how we can profit from this, how our country can advance. But it seemed to me to be a kind of centralization of power, a kind of centralization of control, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the Caribbean and throughout the world. So we have to be very, very careful. We have to do our due diligence as they uh, suggested so that we on our own, based upon our own research, make informed decisions based upon education and understand the cryptos that are stable, the cryptos that are on a, a good blockchain, the cryptos that have KYC and um, you know regulations to fight against uh, terrorism and the financing of terrorism. That's my take. I think the one ecosystem is, is poised in a very powerful and strong way. And what, what needs to happen is greater adoption and greater usability of all ones. Thank you. Well said, well said, well said. Don't tell the boundary. Don't tell the boundary. No, 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 sir. In cricket, in cricket the umpire does do so when eight or six. <laughs> well, that's it. Right? When you touch, when you touch, when you touch six, the umpires do so. Nine not four, nine not four, nine six. Nine not six. He hit it, he hit it, he hit it. Out of the park. What you doing? What you doing? Out of the park, definitely. So, okay, guys. So what we're talking about here is persons um, not benefiting because of ignorance, right? And of course, we know that knowledge is only power when it's applied. In this era of decentralized finance, where everybody now becomes personally responsible for their own um, maintenance of wealth and assets, especially in the digital space, as long as you, the viewers who look at our show, remain ignorant, somebody is going to make a profit, right? Our organization has been around since 2014, and what we feature is financial education up to the university, even tertiary and economic level, right? And that is what we have been featuring from, from time immemorial to the time we got on the air with this program. We've been preaching and teaching education, financial education at that, right? Knowledge about cryptocurrency, knowledge about blockchain technology, knowledge about finance. And, you know, there are a plethora of opportunities now popping up, some that are locally based, some that are foreign based, and we know that there are lots of persons participating. I myself um, took notice of a post in one of the groups that I'm involved in. Doing excuse, just just pause. You have somebody coming calling Junella in from, Ab from, Philippines. from the Philippines. Welcome, hey. welcome, Hello. welcome. Greetings, right. greetings. Thank you very much for your comments. Right. It's good to have you here. From the Philippines, nice. I don't know what time it is there, but thank you for being switched on. That's nice. so good. I, and from, I don't know how to pronounce the name properly, June Ella Abdua Benjit Jr. I don't know. I hope I did some kind of um, <laughs> proper yes. reading there. So we welcome you. We welcome yeah. you. You're watching from the Philippines, and it's good to have you on board. Right. Love to you, brother, too. As a fellow you know you belong to One Life because you mentioned it. Dean Shaker, One Academy. And look at it. Thank go ahead, go ahead, Dwayne. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. your comments, though. Yes, guys. So I was saying that I was amazed to see someone who we had spoken to cryptocurrency about in a particular group that I'm involved in, posting uh, a, a meeting opportunity for one of our competitors that is in Trinidad and Tobago at this time. Now, mind you, when we were preaching and teaching this cryptocurrency gospel of the one ecosystem, persons weren't too eager to understand. However, 
something that has tickled the air in terms of the other message resonated with them. And of course, they found themselves now being able to represent these opportunities. But here was going to happen. A lot of cryptocurrency opportunities and organizations are going to be weighed in the balance and they are going to be found wanting because they agreed. will not meet compliance standards. Agreed. agreed. Right? Exactly. Now, one, of, one of the things that I'm really grateful for having come into our opportunity is the fact that I was privy to a lot of legal um, documents that would have been submitted in different jurisdictions throughout the European Union where our organization came under scrutiny from many governments, right? They closed our offices, they ransacked servers, they confiscated documents, and at the end of it all, six years later, our company is still standing and standing strong. I have to do that. That is right. Right? You are so, correct, sir. Go to the top of the class. So yes. it. Yes. All right. And, and, well, I'm and, and, and hit some six there, boy. Nice to okay. get. Tell me when I could jump in, you know. All right. Another six are going to come through. Closing off. We're closing off in, in 40 seconds. So, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I said all of that to say, right, that this company is on a stable footing, right? And the footing that it's based upon, it's, it's upon you and it's upon I. Cliff and I were speaking about the fact that, listen, we don't have to do it all. Everyone, every IMA in every different country in the world, when they bring somebody into this opportunity, it creates value for all of us. Not one particular group, but all of us. And you I have love to it. say, Buenos, have you have to say hello to Brother Keston Care. Yes, you yes. Have to what that was? Yes, yes. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. Yes, so I'll leave it there, Clefandana. Keeping your eyes on yes. the prize. Yes, Keston Pierre, better known as Sawa. Listen. The, the Black Syrian. <laughs> oh, right. the Black Syrian. Well said, well said. Yes, yes. I'm All with right. vision. All right. Now, we only discussing the first four chapters, that do, the first four paragraphs, paragraphs. that are read. Yeah? That is all. Now, I, in reflecting, what, what happened is that a person brought this article to my attention. And they greeted me with this, they said, Cliff, we reached now, you know. You see how things are coming around? Things looking positive. I read the article, and I say, hmm, I wish I could have had your enthusiasm, but I don't have it. They say, well, how you could say that? So I then went on to share things. You see, I could only talk from my personal experience. You see, if somebody telling you, that listen, Cliff Samuel saying, Don't worry, one day you're gonna make it in this world, you're gonna be a champion, you're gonna be a, a, you're gonna be head and shoulders above all those who didn't want to do it. Yet the persons who you're looking for guidance to guidance for beating you down. You who you think you will quicker believe? Mm. The, the mentors who beating you down, or the person who somewhere in the background said, Don't worry, you're gonna make it. Somehow it will be a hard fight you have. I am I am hearing where Donna says in, in reading the article that the central bank is saying, listen, we not we have not blocked people from purchasing cryptocurrencies. My experience in going to commercial banks does not suggest that. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. In sir. fact, Donna even read also we are a number of persons had said to the Sunday Express that they also had the same situation. All right. So central bank is saying one thing: the commercial banks who are supposed to be carrying out their mandates are not. That is in what sync I want with to them. Say. Any central sync. bank dictates what the commercial yeah. banks do. Right. right. So, so they're not in sync. You and banking say, right. yes, I, I got right. to know something. Just now, let's go back to my personal experience. You see, unless you walk in my shoes, you can't tell me why I'm not smiling much. Hmm. Hmm. I, I hear any central bank saying, according to the article, that listen, just be careful because listen, cryptocurrencies are real risky business and risky anything. 
I remember in 2017, a year after I was involved in this business, they still didn't know much. I approached a friend of mine who was working in Central Bank to have a meeting in Central Bank about what we offered. It was being set up. And then my friend then calls me to tell me, hey, you can't have that because word come to us, that is highly illegal. That's an, that cryptocurrency thing is a no-no in this country. Mm -hmm. I say, what? Mm. We were even to have a meeting carded yes. in the auditorium. We paid for the meeting mm -hmm. to be held yes. in the auditorium I remember amongst that. our IMAs in 2017. Mm -hmm. You hear what I'm saying now, general public? We paid for that meeting. We invited persons to come and hear what we had to say. We paid for the meeting. We paid not only a down payment, we paid for the venue for the weekend. A couple of days before, Central Bank calls us and tells us, look all your money. You all cannot have the venue. We say, but we paid for it already. Why? That is the word we get. That is all we could say about it. All you look back, all your money, we, you all cannot have any meeting. <laughs> so you understand now, I am seeing a big turn around from what they're saying. In 2018, my wife and I had a meeting, a couple meetings with a young lady who works in Central Bank. She was gung-ho about what we had to offer in this project. And she was running with it, ready to come on board. Then to call me and tell me, hey, I was told if I do this, I have no job there. Wow. No, I could just tell you what I am told by that person, 2018. You understand? It, I am told, I was told that by other persons working in the banking industry, because I'm ex-bankers and you're a couple of persons. Back then, 2018, is either you go on with the cryptocurrency or you, you leave your job, if that's what you want to do. My, my wife could uh, endorse what I'm saying. So I am telling you my experience to hear the central bank saying this now, it does not give me much comfort. Because why? If this is how you all feel about it still being risky, so you move from a position of being illegal to now being risky. Okay, good. And you guys did an excellent job, you, Brother Noel and Dwayne, did an excellent job in saying, okay, since this is risky, why didn't you do like what we are doing and try to sensitize and educate the public on what is coming and how to be able to benefit from this thing? No, you didn't do that. But I can't accept that stuff. Don't banks do forex trading and all those other risky things? Risky. Mm -hmm. With our money. Money. All right. mm -hmm. Our money. With all right. our money. You come, you come and ask me a question. So we're moving now from crypto to forex. But we balance it. Just now, just now, just now, just now, just now, just now. Forex is risky. I could tell you that. In the forex arena, they tell you 90%. They have a what you call a 90 90 90 rule. Yeah, you want to tell you 90 90 90 rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say 90% of the persons who enter the forex industry to do forex trading are going to surely lose at least 90% of the account within the first 90 days of the trading. Lord, eh. You understand? You hear what I'm saying? So you only have a 10% chance of having some kind of money left after the first three months in forex trading. That's how risky it is. Who is left after who is left after six months is even smaller than 10%. That is an adage 90-90-90 rule in forex. All right. So we're going on. That's now I want persons to understand. Donna just raised a question. I was I had been part into some investments and so I was speaking to a very close relative of mine. And oh, he was telling me about something he's called back. He's ETFs. Back. He's saying you're really inspired everyone life I am eight globally. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank so, you. Most of us here in the Philippines, thank you for being so vocal and proactive in our mission and vision. We will continue. 
Sure. Well, boy, I now feel as though I reaching someone. Even if Trinidad and Tobago in the end, at Let's least one. Let's get a round of applause, man. Thank you, Philippines. <laughs> now, here's something. Excellent. In Trinidad and Tobago, I don't know if it's the same thing in the Philippines. A very close relative was talking to me about ETFs. ETFs is something that has been around years now. Yes. Future. But it's not in Trinidad and Tobago in the industry. I'm not talking about NFT now. I'm talking about ETFs. All right? I'm not going to go into what it is. Our listeners could do a little research where see what's ETFs. It's something that's been around a long time. All right? It involves other companies and so on. On our local stock exchange, it was a... We were, we approach a broker to find out how could we purchase ETF from here. We were told it is very expensive. You cannot do it. You have to go straight to the bank. Okay? Went to the bank. I wouldn't get into which bank it is. Went from one bank to another bank to... Finally, the bank said, listen, the minimum you could purchase to get into an ETF as an individual is 5,000 US dollars. 5,000 US, eh? Okay, we had the money. The money was there for the, to, to cover it. So the individual says, okay, I'd like to have it. The bank says, no, 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 no. We can't give you money for that. Yet. The individual is saying, but wait, this will benefit me. I know I'm going. He said, no, no, but I can't give you money for that. If you have money for other things. So the person who wanted to be able to benefit themselves by getting involved in ETF, their own money, no risk, is their own money. And the bank says, no. You understand? And then you telling me they wouldn't lend for ETF, but the central bank saying they're willing to lend for cryptocurrency, which is even more risky than that. This is what you're saying? Somehow, as I say, my experience suggests to me that this article that they're saying there, it holds a lot of water. That is all I say. I, 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 but they're not lending any money for cryptocurrency. They're saying they're not. No, they say they're not blocking transactions. But that is for not cryptocurrency. True. I but, have tried but, to do it. They block it. This is what. This is my point I'm making. All right. But I don't want to, want to say something. Yeah. Well, yes. we have to come to the realization that in this dispensation, our financial ability to progress rests in our hands. The decision lies with us. Now, we understand that the bank is there to fulfill a function and a role in society. But it's fast becoming general knowledge now that they do not have our best interests at heart. You could have quicker gotten a loan to play in a mass band with no carnival in 2022. True. Go to the top of the class. And to be able to get money to start a business. Yep. Right? And and all the different uh, houses that they have put in place, government and private, that basically want you to come in there with your business idea. Right? Pitch it, right? For them to blank you. And then six or eight months later, you see your business idea going up in the hands of somebody else because they did not maintain the confidentiality of what you put out to them. And listen, there are many, many stories right here in Trinidad and Tobago when people put their confidence in a system that is innately corrupt, right? Mm. And Mm. persons who we think in business should operate in better principle and morals have none, right? And we are we are entering into the realm now of decentralized finance, guys. And this is where, listen, you have to take responsibility for your own finance. You have to take responsibility for your knowledge, right? But there's so much information for us to cover this evening. All we're asking you, it's to pay attention. And as Cliff and Donna said at the beginning of the show, don't take our, our information that we're sharing with you as the gospel, but go out there and do your own due diligence. And you will see, we will be weighed in the balance and we won't be found wanting. Because we Love we that. And on that note, let's head for a break. We need to give them yes. a little time out to soak in what was said because we give them a lot of education today. So let's take a break at this time. And please don't go away. Be back.
Good day all, my name is King James, part of the One Life Network Caribbean team. If you have no knowledge of what is cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, I'm inviting you to get started with this concept. It is $1,610 for you to participate in a financial curriculum that would help shape your world and your future, but better and greater than that. In our curriculum, there's no school that teaches our children about finance. This is a unique opportunity for you to get involved in practical and theory. You need the best of both worlds. The theory we offer allows you to participate in the practical. Position yourself strategically. Get a starter package from one of your local IMAs, somewhere near to you, some cousin, friend, uncle, some loved one. Do not hold back yourself from getting started with our organization. One life for more life. One Academy, join the financial revolution. Get started no 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 get started with your one academy package get started with your starter package it's only 1600 TT dollars get your financial education from the one academy although it's a beginner package the information you're going to get from your one academy starter package you would have more knowledge than 90% of the world's population on finance for just 1600 TT. Let's create a revolution. Let's spread the epidemic of our one academy, one life. Get it today. This is Full 100, an all-natural herbal dietary supplement formulated exclusively for men. Our proprietary blend was designed with one goal in mind, to improve your overall health, rejuvenating your vitality, energy, strength, and libido. Want to be at your peak performance in everything you do? Then get Full 100. Fast-acting, long-lasting, with no side effects. Well, heat in the place, don't back back. We're in carnival season, so we know what we're talking about. As it stands, let's continue. Most commercial banks in Trinidad and Tobago do not allow the purchase of cryptocurrencies except the Republic Bank. Highlighted and bold in the article, watching it. Hmm. What do you have to say to that thing? Yeah, yeah, let Cliff talk in truth. Yeah, <laughs> because last month, last month, what month we in? We in, in March now. Yeah, we March. Right. Yeah. So it would have been early last month, early February. Mm -hmm. I was told this, and I say you know something. No, I don't have a good credit. night. Good night, Alexander. <laughs> good night. How are you doing? Oh, you go ahead. <laughs> good night. Yeah. Right. So last month I was told the same thing. Republic Bank is the only bank. I made an appointment and went in to, to get a credit card for this purpose. I don't have a credit card, right? And that was by choice. So because I had one and a couple of years ago I got rid of it and now I realize this nay, cryptocurrencies, I need to get that because I'm here in Republic Bank is the one. Went in, had a real nice interview with a young lady very professional she was very courteous really appreciated how she dealt with me in fact i was looking around at the independent square branch where i went to because that was my first first branch that i worked at and i was telling her how much it had changed when i was there mm -hmm. um everything was going good everything was on up to how much you want what the figure would be uh, you have all the information that you could qualify with yes so what you intend to do with this card? Well, I ain't lying to you. I come out and I say, well, listen, they have some cryptocurrencies that are interested in, right? I see this is the way of the future. 
And I understand you all are the bank that, that lends on that. She said, oh, um, excuse me. I said, I mean, excuse you. So she gets up, goes to another office, comes back. Um, you know, you can't do that, you know. I say, why? I say, why you can't do that? Hmm. But I was told you all could do it. I, I was told, is it official that you all can't do it? No, it is not official that we can't do it. Now, this is what I'm being told. Eh? It is not official that we can't do it. However, until we get a, a, a mandate that steers us in a positive direction, we cannot say we are doing it. And if I was to give you the credit card still, and you do it, they're going to block the transaction. And if you do it twice, they're going to seize the card. So I was like, all right, okay, just now, just now, wait, just now. So if I take this card from you guys, would you all tell me what I cannot use the card for? Well, no. All right, so if I am not told that I cannot use the card for crypto and I go ahead and use it, how could you block my, how could you seize my card if I do it twice since you all did not notify me? that I cannot use the card card. You understand? I am now acting in ignorance. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm saying. Well, listen, that is how it is. Anything. So again, all I am saying is that I read the news. Maybe society have me to pay a price, so maybe everybody else is get through the Republic Bank. I didn't. And somehow I heard it from a number of other persons who didn't also. But if you read, could you bring back up the reading for that thing as it stands? I want to share something with you here. Look at below. Denise Ramnarine, Republic's General Manager of Electronic Channels and Payment, told the Sunday Express that the bank facilitates the purchase of cryptocurrencies because it is not illegal. Illegal. Risky. Right. So this is what, again, I'm saying I know what I read. I know what you read out to the yeah. public here. I'm just sharing my experience, however. And that is, but that is of the yeah, confusion of saying. the banks because it seems like there's an iffy something going on. Like if your central bank is saying, listen, I really don't want that done, you know, we'll do sure yet, so hold on it. But the on the other side, side, you understand what I'm saying? I, I, want, I want to mention, I don't want it to look like I'm a prophet of doom and gloom. Right. Banking industry from the central banks go right to the commercial banks. I am happy to know that you all no longer look at it as illegal and it is just risky. Because back then when I started to talk to you guys, and the risk it was born, illegal. The risk is borne by the customer. Right, so if right. I say I want it. Right? Because if you're using my money to do what you want in the bank, and I want to use it to do what I, I want, I get a thing that Guys, is. by the way, I want you all to understand, when I was telling them about the credit card, I was telling them I was putting my money of course. to back the money I was using. You know, so course, I was not going to use any of the bank's funds. Eh? I want you all to understand that. Yes. You're right? looking for the facility. Is the facility Yes. Right? That's all. So I just, I, I was not using a, a dollar from anybody. It was my money I was putting out there. And right. anything I had to lose was my money. Yes. Okay. So I don't know if you all have anything else you want to add on that here, because there are other paragraphs that don't know what, what you need to read from. What, definitely what I'd like to add there is that there are inconsistencies within the system. Clearly, True. clearly, True. clearly the memo that would have been sent out by the central bank to the commercial banks has not, confused. has not what? filtered down the system, right? And, so you and not only that... Go ahead, Brennan. Yeah, and not only that, uh, Dwayne and Donna and Cliff, right? Um, remember in the earliest when we, we got involved in this uh, cryptocurrency project, we met with the uh, Telecommunications Authority, okay? They had all the experts from the government and from private sector and so on. And the place was packed to capacity. And by the way, we as a community, we attended all the various forums and conferences that the government had on cryptocurrency, digital money, so to speak, right? And they painted a scenario similar to what is being painted by that article now. This apprehension, this skepticism, as if we're dealing with drugs. Mm. Like, like, you, like you can't touch this thing, like something wrong with this, right? Uh, and the scenario they painted about the volatility, the, the fact that they can't track it, you know, the anonymity, um, 
lack of KYC and all of those, of those things, the usability of it, I asked a question before the August crowd there, a big question, what if there is a cryptocurrency that meets all the requirements that you outlined there? They couldn't answer because the one ecosystem met all of those requirements. That's we right. Are not, we, we are not volatile. We have great usability in our 196 plus countries of the world. We personally experience using our ones to purchase products and services all over the world. Correct. We have education, I'm saying, kudos to us. We can pat ourselves, we can give ourselves a round of applause because we, the one ecosystem and the IMAs, yes. we did the work. We That's educated right. the masses about yeah. cryptocurrency, authentic cryptocurrency. Yes. And we showed usability at the Hilton and various mm -hmm. yeah. uh, geographical locations where our ones were being used and with our stable value. And we are building daily, daily we are building, you know, we are, we are there in the trenches, sweating, you know, through blood, through tears, going through building, educating the masses about. So to me, the central bank is a journey come lately. To me, Trinidad and Tobago, they are, they are, they are liturgic with the yeah. technology. They are now playing, um, playing catch up. We are way advanced. And what the and, private and sector need wanted, to do, uh, let me just finish here, like, what the private sector yes. need to do, they need to take a hard look. Yes. They need to do their due diligence, you know, with, with, with great emphasis and embrace this thing. And let us take Trinidad forward. We can take I Trinidad forward. You know, I, I want to take what you're saying a step further. Then what the private sector needs to do and the government is meet with us again. That's right. Amen. And we need to add some care. Care what is we say you now. Dwayne, take yes. this soup for some more trendy flavor. What's up, Dwayne? Listen, guys, I do not need to be validated by the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not saying need... you're looking for validation, I, I, huh? What, I, what I'm, I'm saying, cool. um, Dwayne, <laughs> more, more people need to be awakened. True. We are the ones doing the work. We in Trinidad here in the Caribbean doing the work. And I'm I saying to the that. corporate world, to you citizens, see, wake up. You see, because the system that we're a part of isn't government operated. It isn't government run. And that's the right. problem. You see, because they are afraid that this disruption in technology will remove the power that they have over the yeah. masses to control exactly. our finances exactly. because we've been controlled for centuries. We've been, exactly. taxed out of, we've been taxed out of our living minds, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, no. I mean, people wouldn't know, but we actually pay tax on tax. When Education and its finest. When you pay import duty, that import duty figure is factored back into the value. And, you, and then you, tax again. And you pay VAT on that. So you yeah. pay VAT on import duty, right? Oh, Listen, wow. how much tax are we going to pay when it is the people who we put in charge of our patrimony do not do a good job of management and their only plan is to impose taxes and fines for other in different infringements in society in order to generate revenue. That is ridiculous, folks. That is ridiculous. In a day and age where the world is evolving so much, we have autonomous cars. We have artificial intelligence interacting with human beings on a large level, right? And the only thing that our government could come up with in order to generate revenue at this point in time, when the yeah. entire world is in economic doldrums, is to impose mm. more tax taxes okay. and fines on the citizens instead of creating opportunities instead of creating opportunities where minds could come together where youthful minds people the, the children of the day they are tuned in their minds are open to innovation and making things better we live in a digital space now where i don't need to be in north america in order to make money i can stay right where i am and make money here europe africa asia South America, Central America, everywhere. 
So why is it that, that we are looking for the validation from these authoritative figures and these bodies when clearly the only thing that they are afraid of is when we become empowered, right? Mm. So that's what we need to do. You need to become empowered. If you don't know what your rights are, how, are you, how do you know if you're violated or not, right? And it's the same thing in the financial world. When you understand the fine print, they can't feed you any BS, right? So, folks, from the beginning of the show, we've been saying, get educated. That's so, right. Educational modules to Amen. help you come up to standard. And you making the effort is so important because listen, if you're not interested in your financial future or leaving a legacy for your children, then whose responsibility should that be? Hmm. Whose, whose responsibility should it be? Should it be mine? Should I take care of all your children that you neglected to take care of? Should I sacrifice and make uh, decisions for the benefit of your children? And when you didn't want to do it yourself, come on, guys, shake yourself. Shake hmm. yourself. All right? And I'll, I'll let me get off my soapbox. No, man, that was real sad. You know, while, while you're talking, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, when we look back or, or we look at what is happening in places like Singapore, where leaders who have empowered their people, where leaders who put their people first, really sincerely put their people first and put things in place, you see the wealth blossoming and growing. You see things happening. You know, something is wrong when we're not thinking right. I, I, I am looking at it and I'm telling myself, I used to make a joke and say, you know, we are 1.3 million people. If the government was to give me my million, I'll do what I have to do with it. Give everybody their money and let me run our own lives. You know, I would make that as a joke, but it has become really serious now because, I mean, you and I know, and, and Brother Noel made the strong point and Cliff, where we are looking at cryptocurrency is not going away. It is here to stay. When are we as a country going to catch up? We realize now that they are introducing CBDCs, which is central bank digital currencies to maintain control. Okay, that's all right. But then don't stop people from trying to live and to build and to become. But we're going to say more about that next week because this has to continue. This article is a long detailed one and it is going to be shared, highlighted and shared with you because the amount of things I got this evening, I mean, they say, tell me, I am leaving here more educated. And I hope that both of us, yeah. Uh, okay, going to let's, one go, more let's go and see. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Let's bring up a point as we talk about it. And let me share it with you. For customers who opt to use their credit cards to purchase cryptocurrencies, their foreign exchange limit is the monthly individual limit on their cards. For customers who opt to use their credit card to purchase cryptocurrencies, it is up to the foreign exchange you receive, it's up to your monthly limit on your card. So if your monthly limit on your card is 200 US, that is all you can use it for. But if the bank door fee you should use $30 out of that, they will block it. I'm telling you because I experienced that. <laughs> I experienced that. So you see what they say there? That ain't true. <laughs> yeah. You have $200 limit on your card, $30 you want to use, your money, and they block it. So tell me, what's so, happening? Yeah. <laughs> so again, so because, because we live in the realm of decentralized finance, all you need to do is connect with somebody in Trinidad and Tobago who has the decentralized currency in their digital wallet, provided with, with your wallet address, give them your fiat, and receive your crypto. I agree with that, but I want the bank to keep the word. They that, said something do to me, keep your word. This is what we say. This is what this is this is the whole contention about this article, you know, Green. Brother Noel. There are ways around everything, but you need yeah. to be honest and if, your word. When you're reading the article, to the person who we are reading it and hearing about this for the first time, it sounds like they eh, but what them people has been saying every Wednesday night, it comes into pass, boy. Acknowledge the crypto king. The crypto king that's right. The because yes, he said, tell them, Julie. Tell them. <laughs> They're very right. right. There are ways we know. But I want persons to understand that, hey, and watch my, there are other articles that we didn't have time to get into tonight. So with your kind permission, 
I want to ask that you come back next week so that we could get into the uh, other more highlighted um, yeah. pieces of information yeah. that we could discuss. And you can join right. the conversation because remember, this is about us talking, educating each other. We had Crypto King, we had people from the Philippines then. The thing about it is we had Alexander. They came on and they shared. Mm -hmm. Come on, talk with us. But, but Find our, out what is happening our in the world experiences, today. experiences, our personal experiences have made us emotional. Not emotional to the point where we ignore rational, but emotional from the point of a hurt in that we feel as though the banks under the central bank not being open and transparent. They're not being transparent. Mm -hmm. We ain't saying that they're lying you now. Right? There's a right. difference between out, uh, outlandish lie and non-transparency. Mm -hmm. You understand? Remember, Pandey had once said, um, politics has a morality of its own. Yes, yeah, what we said. Well, I had to wonder now if banking has a morality of its it own. Does. You have to wonder that <laughs> because my personal experience, and I've tried it a couple of times, maybe I get branded because of the, the cause that I represent. Maybe that is why. I don't know. Closing right? comments. Okay. So, guys, as we, I just want to tell you all, I hope I see you all back here next week because we're going to go in more to discuss it. I just want Brother Noel and Dwayne to finish up something. Yeah, because I'm good. <laughs> right? Any closing yes, comments? I, yes. Yes. What, yeah. What I, what I want to say, uh, viewing audience, right? Uh, when, you, when you observe the geopolitics, what is going on in the Ukraine and Russia and other parts of the world, uh, coming out of the repercussions of the pandemic, the global pandemic, what is happening as far as the transport chain and the, the increase in gas and, and oil prices. We have to watch what we are doing. We have to educate our mind and position ourselves. Don't just, as we know, say, depend upon the government or look for validation from the government. Educate your mind. Mm -hmm. Listen to what we are saying and position yourself so that you can take care of your friends and your family. Thank you. Right. So, guys, listen, we've said a lot tonight. We're not, we're not, um, we're not vilifying the financial sector. What we are asking for is accountability and transparency. And right. I think, given, given the day and age in which we live, that is a simple thing to ask for. You know, it's nothing, nothing outlandish. Nothing out of out of the ordinary or extreme at all. Accountability should be there for each and every citizen in Trinidad and Tobago and around the world. And I think we should continue to hold our financial institutes to account for what they do and how they deal with us. Outside of that, guys, we're going into a realm of decentralized finance where your money is your business. So you need to get educated. We have the products that you need in order to take you there get in contact with us. Love and blessings to each and everyone. Love and light. And we'll see you next week. Please go on. See you next week. Be blessed. Be safe. Yeah. Ukraine and Russia. Yes. Yes. Join us next week. Uh One ecosystem. You know them. We not right no free nobody, but we respect everybody, and we better than everybody, so we will run with anybody, no fear no better than we, no kind no better than we, step on me one and say, one ecosystem to the world you say, one ecosystem will do something, do something, do something, do something, who no do? Something, do something, I'm not talking. One ecosystem will do something, do something, do something, do something, uno do something, do something, I'm not bagging chasing. Aye.